In this video we'll look at how to determine the empirical formulae of unknown molecules using their percent composition. But first, what is an empirical formula? You are of course by now very familiar with molecular formulae. They show the exact number and type of atoms that are bonded together to give a particular molecule. For instance, a water molecule contains two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen atom, so we write it as H2O. Hydrogen peroxide has the crucial addition of another oxygen, so it's H2O2. And acetic acid, which when diluted with water gives vinegar, contains two carbon, four hydrogen and two oxygen atoms in each molecule. So these are molecular formulae. The empirical formula of a compound shows the lowest whole number ratio of atoms in the molecule. For some molecules this is the same as its molecular formula. With water, for instance, we cannot simplify the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen any further, since we have only one oxygen anyway. So the empirical formula of water is still H2O. But in hydrogen peroxide the ratio of H to O is 2 to 2, which simplifies to 1 to 1. So the empirical formula is HO. Similarly, for acetic acid, all the numbers of atoms in the formula are divisible by 2, so the empirical formula is CH2O. Note that if you're dealing with an ionic compound, the formula will already be an empirical formula, since it represents the lowest whole number ratio of ions in the ionic lattice. To give you an idea of the historical importance of this slightly odd way of looking at things, it was empirical formulae that were the first formulae that chemists were able to discover. In fact, the word empirical means discovered by experiment. One of the methods early chemists used to analyse unknown substances was developed by Justus von Liebig in 1831, specifically for carbon-based compounds. A sample would be thoroughly burnt in the presence of oxygen. Combustion of a carbon-based fuel produces carbon dioxide and water as products, so those product gases would flow first through a tube containing dry calcium chloride. This salt absorbs water, so from the increase in mass of this tube, the scientist could work out how much water was produced, and hence what mass of hydrogen had been in the original compound. The remaining gas would then flow through these bulbs, with the lower ones containing potassium hydroxide solution. The potassium hydroxide absorbs carbon dioxide by reacting with it to produce potassium carbonate. So, by the increase in mass of this part of the apparatus, the scientist could work out how much carbon dioxide had been produced, and hence what mass of carbon was in the original sample. Armed with these values and the mass of the original su substance, the chemist could work out the percentage by mass of carbon and hydrogen in the original sample. And from this information, a simple empirical formula could be worked out. So let me show you how it's done. What we need to do is to turn the mass percentages from our experimental analysis into mole ratios. Since moles are just a way of skip counting atoms, the mole ratio also gives us the whole atom ratio in the formula of the compound. In essence, we're doing the opposite of what we do when we work out the mass percent of an element in a particular substance. There we took the formula of the substance and converted it into mass percentages for each element, and here we're taking the mass percentages for each element and converting them back into a formula. So here's our problem. Say we've done a mass percent analysis of a sample and we find that it's composed of 81.7% carbon and 18.3% hydrogen. The sequence of calculations that you go through is nicely summarised by this little rhyme which I picked up from Bergman and Sams in their chemistry videos. Percent to mass, mass to mole, divide by small, times till whole. Let's go through it step by step. I'm going to write this out so that at each step I'm showing the ratio. So I'll start with the ratio of percentages of carbon to hydrogen. The first step is then to convert the percentage into a mass in grams. This is dead easy. You just assume that you have a total mass of 100 grams, and then the masses of the individual elements will be the same as their percentages. So now we have the mass ratio between the two elements. OK, so the second step, we need to convert these masses into moles. This is a simple mass-mole conversion, which we'll do over here. 81.7 grams of carbon divided by the molar mass of carbon, which is 12.01 grams per mole, gives me 6.80 moles of carbon. 
and 18.3 grams of hydrogen divided by 1.008 grams per mole, that gives me 18.2 moles of hydrogen. So that gives us the mole ratio of carbon to hydrogen. But we still need to get it down to the simplest mole ratio. And that leads us to step number three. How do you simplify a ratio? Well, you divide by the lowest common factor. So here we're going to divide through by the smallest of the two numbers. That will give us a ratio of one to something. So we divide through by 6.80 and that simplifies the ratio to one to 2.67. Now we know it's impossible to have less than a whole atom. So this ratio, because it's eventually going to represent numbers of atoms in a molecule, has to be made into a whole number ratio. So the last step, times till whole, just involves multiplying through by a factor until we have a whole number ratio. Now, if you're good with fractions and decimals, you'll see already what we have to multi multiply through by. But let me give you a cheat sheet. If your number ends in 0.5, then it means it's something and a half. And if you multiply through by 2, it will become a whole number. If it ends in 0.33 or 0.67, or close to, then it's something and a third, or something and two thirds. And you'll need to multiply through by three to make that fraction a whole number. And if it ends in 0.25, then it's something and a quarter, and you multiply through by four. In this case, we need to multiply through by three. And when you do that, you find that the ratio is three to eight. So the empirical formula of our compound is C3H8. Let's try another. A compound containing only hydrogen, sulfur and oxygen is found to be composed of 2.46% hydrogen and 58.48% oxygen. Determine its empirical formula. First, write out the percentages as a ratio. Note that we haven't been given the percentage of sulfur, but we can work it out because the percentages must add up to 100%. Now convert them to masses, just a matter of changing the units. Now convert each mass into moles by dividing by the molar mass for that element. And that gives us a ratio of 2.44 to 1.22 to 3.66. Now we divide through by the smallest of those numbers, which is 1.22, and that gives us 2 to 1 to 3. So in this case we didn't need to do the final step because the third step already gave us a whole number ratio and our empirical formula is H2SO3.